Hello everyone and welcome to this week's After Effects quick tip scripting tutorial. In this one, I'm going to show you how to make a random look generator in After Effects that skims through your version of After Effects, picks random effects that are installed on it, and then applies them to whatever layer you have selected. So I can run it and it's going to randomly generate between one and five random effects, creating completely original looks each time. Sometimes it will apply effects and make it look weird or not visible, but other times it will create an entirely original look that was nothing like you expected. So the purpose of it is just kind of to have some fun, apply random effects, and look at how we can access all of the effects built into After Effects itself. Before we get started with this video, I just want to remind you down below, hit subscribe, hit the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly on the channel, and down in the description you can check out a link to the GitHub for this exact code to try it out for yourself and mess around with it, and down there as well you can follow us on Instagram to get notified of when new videos are uploaded. And of course, don't forget to join the Discord where we have great discussions on scripting, extensions, plugins, expressions, and much more. So now that that's out of the way, let's go ahead and get started with the code and explaining a little bit of how it's going to work. The main things to take into account here is we're going to have a custom input for how many times or how many randomized effects it's going to apply, anywhere between 1 and n. In my case, I have it set to between 1 and 5 effects that will be created and applied, and you can change this yourself to uh, get different amounts of looks. And then we're going to be using essentially the app.fx, which has a reference to every installed effect, its match name and its name and its category built into After Effects. And we're going to randomize our number of times to randomize and generate random effects. And then we're going to run through each effect and say if it's a property is changeable, essentially, we're going to randomly change it. So today you'll basically learn how to access all the built-in installed effects, how to adjust and randomize the values of all the properties in an effect based on their minimum and maximum, and a few other useful tricks. So we'll open up a new JavaScript and jump right into it. The first thing we're going to need is a variable called random effect, which is going to be representative of the effect itself whenever it's applied. We're also going to need a variable called num times to random or something like that to keep track of how many times it's going to create a random effect. And we're going to randomize this between one and five. So we'll just copy and paste this code here. And essentially this is just taking the random value, which gives you a random number between zero and one, times is it by five, which makes the max of it five or six. And it's gonna generate a random number essentially so I'm going to copy and paste my random code here just because it's used quite commonly. And this will give us our random number. We can start off maybe a smaller number like three instead of five. And then I'm gonna need a variable for the composition we're in as well as our layer. So I'll say if our comp is equal to app.project.activeItem and our layer, we'll go ahead and say is equal to comp.selected layers index zero, meaning the first selected layer. Next, I'm also going to create a variable called type string. And what this is going to do is store the type string that it gives us when we analyze each of these properties. So you're going to get a different type of element from a drop down versus a slider like this. And we're going to be looking at this type string, which returns basically a bunch of numbers. And if the numbers are equivalent to a slider object, we're going to adjust the value of that slider. But if it's uh, equivalent essentially to the number of something that we don't know or can't change, then we're not going to change it. We'll go over this a bit as we get there, as we read the actual value, but for now just know that um, we need something to store it to compare it to. So now what we're going to do is create an app.begin and end undo group. That way we can undo everything if we want to very easily. And I'm just going to call this randomize. And then the first thing we're going to do is loop through the number of times we want to randomize everything. So I'll say var i is equal to 1. And for i is less than or equal to our number of times to random, then we're going to increment i by 1. Now we're going to grab our random effect variable and set it equal to a random effect. Now checking out the scripting guide, if you type in dot effects, you can see there's a attribute called app.effects, which contains an object essentially full of all of our display names, categories, and match names of all of our effects. So the way we access it is by essentially saying app.effects, and then we can put in information within the object itself. So if I just quickly open up a new JavaScript and write line app.effects, and then we can try the first one. You can see we're going to get an object. So let's grab 
some of the values from within it. And since we're getting an object, we'll go ahead and loop through it to see what it's composed of. So we'll say var i in our app.effects. And then I'm going to show what i is and then show what app.effects i is. So this is going to loop through all the effects installed inside of here. You can see it's just giving us numbers as well as objects. So we need to go a little bit further and instead of just saying to get the object, let's go ahead and say display name. And now it should give us the names of all the effects as it sweeps by. So this is a whole list of all the installed effects. We essentially want to randomize between the beginning of it and the length of it. So back in our code here, we need to say math.floor math.random and we're going to multiply it by our app.effects.length. So this is going to give us a random effect object, but which we need to get the match name from because we're going to be applying it, so we need the match name. And since this whole bit of code right here gives us our match name, all we need to do is use that match name now inside of an add property function. So I'll say layer dot effects dot add property and we're going to add the property with this match name. So essentially what all this compressed code is saying is we're going to store in our random effect variable, which is going to store just an effect applied. We're going to store an effect we're adding to our layer, which is our selected layer here. And we're adding a random effect uh, from our entire palette of After Effects effects. And we're grabbing the match name, which is what is required essentially to add it. So if I was to actually go ahead and run this, it should work already. You can see it's applied a threshold effect, reapply it, it applies a couple of other effects. Now what we want to do is essentially go through all of the properties in these effects and randomize them. So now if I go ahead and run the script, you can see that it's already working and applying random effects to our layer. So now what we need to do then is run through all of the properties built into it and randomize them if we're able to. So now that we have a variable for each effect we apply, we're going to loop through this effects properties. The way we're going to do that is saying for inside of our other for loop, var e is equal to one, and for e is less than or equal to our random effect dot number properties, num properties, increment e by one. Now what I'm going to do is finally show you the property value string. So if I say random effect and grab the current property we're looking at, and I'm going to say property value type. So now that we're getting these values, I'm going to go ahead and grab our type string and set this equal to our random effect dot property E and the property value type. And basically what I'm going to do is check if it doesn't contain certain strings. What I found is that things with the property value type that end in 12, as well as ones that end in 19, when I tried to change the values when doing the testing for the script, it would really mess up everything. So what I need to do is make sure the type string does not contain 12 and does not contain 19. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy this code here. And essentially all it's saying is if the type string converted to a string, I need to add the if here, if our type string converted to a string uh, does not contain 12, if the index of it is below zero, that means it doesn't exist. And if it's also the same for 19, then we basically know we have something we want. Another thing I want to do is check the length of our new value. All of these ones you see here are one dimensional, but if you had say, for example, a point control, then you'd have multiple dimensions, which would cause a lot more complexity and problems with this. So what I'm going to do to check if it's one dimensional, I'm going to take my random effect dot property E and I'm going to say dot value dot split by commas. And if I split it by a comma and it, it's an array or like an RGB value or an X and Y, it's going to have a length of greater than one. So I'm going to say if the length of my split is equal to one, that's a one dimensional property that we want. Because if I was to say get amplitude here, I just have 50. That's going to return the value of 50. If I split it by a comma, there's no comma. So the length remains one. But if there's something like RGB, which contains three values separated by commas, you're going to get the length of three. So we're just using uh, the value essentially to check if it's one dimensional. 
And the last thing we're going to check is whether or not this property has a minimum and a maximum. Some properties don't have a min and a max in After Effects, strangely enough. So when we use the random function, we don't have any bounds to randomize between. And we might give it invalid values. So I'm going to say if our random effect dot property E dot has min value. And I'm also going to say and our random effect dot property E dot has max value. And we don't need to put is equal to true because this infers that they're returning true rather than false or a null. And it's also uh, just has min, it's not min value and max value. So just has min and has max. And if this is the case, we're going to grab our random effect and its property and set the value equal to a random value between our min and max. And finally, we're going to take that property, which we now know has a min and a max, so we can randomize between them. And we're going to do exactly that. Use our previous random function and generate a random number between our max value and our min value. So a little bit more complicated for a quick tip tutorial, but I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, down below, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell icon to be notified of when videos are coming out on Monday and Thursday, and also hit the like button. Down in the description, you can check out the code for this project in the GitHub link. Follow us there and follow us on Instagram to be notified of when videos and code goes live. And of course, don't forget to check out and follow the Discord to get help and help others with scripting, extensions, plugins, and expressions. Thanks again for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this quick tip. We'll see you next time.